Man is born free, but everywhere he is in supply chains. Rousseau almost said that, and here's the White House. It was clear in March of 2020, when COVID hit, that, that the supply chains across the world had been disrupted. People couldn't get dishwashers and, and furniture and treadmills delivered on time, not to mention all sorts of other things. So why the is it- The tragedy of the short, the treadmill that's delayed. Right, the treadmill. Right. That was White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki on October 19th, responding with tongue firmly in cheek to a reporter's question about the world's growing supply chain crisis. Saki had a point, which is that not every crisis is created equal. What's that you say? Starbucks out of oat milk. The wine shop is running low on Malbec. The pet store no longer carries Moose's favorite turkey jerky. But fear not, my friends, we shall overcome. The supply chain crisis is, of course, much bigger than treadmills and dog treats. U.S. consumer prices overall jumped 6.2% in October compared to the previous year, with surging costs for food and gas and housing, basic stuff. That's the highest inflation rate in over 30 years. And right now, most everything manufactured or produced anywhere in the world is in short supply. That includes electronics like the computer chips that run your cars and the chemicals that go into house paint and medical devices and even the food and clothing that international aid groups rely on. Like in Haiti, a country that has suffered a devastating earthquake and presidential assassination in just the past year, not to mention the pandemic, a nonprofit in Nashville has been struggling to send shoes to Port-au-Prince because so many retailers are holding on to their stock to meet unprecedented demand. So why is this happening now? It's the pandemic. As COVID spread, factories in China, South Korea, Taiwan, and Southeast Asia, those responsible for the bulk of the world's manufacturing, were forced to shut down or limit production and shipping companies slash their schedules in anticipation of reduced demand. But at the same time, online shopping surged because millions of people were forced to stay home. Consumers took money that was previously reserved for restaurants or vacations that they weren't going on, and instead they spent it on goods. Manufacturers have tried to keep up by increasing production, but one supply crisis brings another. It's a challenge that President Biden tried to illustrate earlier this month when he was at the Port of Baltimore. Even products as simple as a pencil can have to use the wood from Brazil, graphite from India, before it comes together at a factory in the United States to get a pencil. Sounds silly, but that's literally how it happens. That said, this isn't all the pandemic's fault. For decades, companies have kept very limited inventories to keep down costs and maximize their profit. I mean, if you're a car company, stocking up on microchips to hedge against the next global crisis may sound like a good idea, but it really doesn't make shareholders any money. And for big box stores, retaining inventory is a lot more expensive than last minute ordering just in time for manufacturers. 